Many, many months ago, I bought into Shopify at $180 per share, but like a fool, I did not buy and hold. Instead, I tried buying in and out, and this was before I was a firm believer in the buy and hold method. But the point is, I know firsthand just how strong Shopify stock is. Now my cost basis for Shopify is $808 and I'm up about 20% on that position, but I might sell my Shopify to buy more of this stock. Let's do it. What's going on everybody? My name is Matthew. Welcome back to my channel and today we are talking all things Mercado Libre, ticker Meli, M-E-L-I, or from here on out known as Meli Rock. This is quite literally a combination of Amazon and Square combined into one stock. And later in this video, we're gonna do a direct side-by-side -side comparison between the three. The difference is Mercado Libre is based in a region that is poised for some serious growth. Latin America. Give me the format. First, as always, an overview of the company and what they do at Mercado Libre. Second, a direct side-by-side -side comparison of Mercado Libre to Amazon, Square, and Square's Cash App. Third, Melly versus Shop and C Limited. Fourth, Stock Split City. All right, so first, an overview of Mercado Libre or Melly and what they do. Mercado Libre offers six integrated e-commerce and digital payment services. First is Mercado Libre Marketplace, which is of course their marketplace, Mercado Pago, their fintech platform, Mercado Envios, I'm gonna butcher all of these by the way, I'm so sorry, Mercado Envios, their logistics service, Mercado Libre's advertising solution, and finally, Mercado Libre Classified Services and Mercado Shops. But for today's video, we're gonna be mainly focused on Mercado Libre's marketplace and their fintech platform, Mercado Pago, because that is where the meat is. To keep it simple, just think of their marketplace as the Amazon of Latin America, the one stop shop for anything you could possibly need. And think of Mercado Pago as the square of Latin America, the digital wallet that is looking to disrupt the banking industry. But let's talk more about that, where they're based. Latin America. Latin America has a population of over 635 million people, pretty much double the population of the United States. And it has one of the fastest growing internet penetration rates in the world, which means every day, People are adopting the internet for things like financial services and e-commerce at a faster rate in Latin America than in anywhere else in the world. Well, almost anywhere else. And that sounds like growth. Mercado Libre is present in 18 countries, including Argentina, Brazil, Mexico, etc. And based on unique visitors and page views, they're the market leaders in each of the major countries where they're present. And we always like to invest in the market leaders. But it gets even better with a time machine, and I am not joking. Mercado Libre's marketplace, part of their business, is literally giving us the ability to hop into a time machine in terms of e-commerce. During the first quarter of 2020, online sales accounted for 12% of the total retail in the United States. This is up from about 4% 10 years ago. 4%, remember that. In Latin America, however, the numbers are far lower, just representing 4.2%. 2% of total retail in the region. So in other words, today, e-commerce accounts for 12% of US retail. 10 years ago, it accounted for 4%. While it still accounts for 4% in Latin America, which means in 10 years, e-commerce in Latin America will look like e-commerce in America. So it's a stretch, but you could argue that investing in Mercado Libre today would be like investing in Amazon's growth story 10 years ago. And there's huge opportunity for Mercado Pago as well. Approximately 70% of the Latin American population is underbanked, if not completely unbanked, and Mercado Pago is coming in to fill that void, just like Square in the US. Huge potential there as well. So now for part two, a literal side-by-side -side comparison between Amazon, Square, and Square's Cash App versus Mercado Libre's offerings. All right, so now we're gonna do a direct side-by-side -side comparison between Mercado Libre and its services on the right, and Amazon combined with Square and Cash App on the left. Because as I've said already, Mercado Libre is like Amazon and Square combined in Latin America. So we'll start with Amazon's home screen right here. Right off the bat, you can see how Mercado Libre on the right and Amazon on the left look pretty similar from the get-go. They even have similar features like Amazon has today's deals, which are always enticing, but Mercado Libre also has deals of the day. And side by side, they look almost identical. Then say you want some groceries, so you go to the Whole Foods tab. Well, Mercado Libre is not to be outdone with their Supermarkets tab, which not only has foods, but also everything else you would typically find in a supermarket. And this really speaks to the fact that Mercado Libre, just like Amazon, 
is the place to go if you need virtually anything shipped to your house. Now let's move on to Cash App versus Mercado Libre's Pago. First, let's cover the Cash App with the scary eye watching our every move. I really don't get why that's there. You got peer-to-peer -peer payments where you can pay your friends or contractor or anything like that. Just either enter their cash tag or you can scan their QR code to pay. Then you have banking where you can receive your paycheck, tax returns, direct deposits, and you can also open the cash card, which is basically a debit card linked to Cash App that gives you boosts or discounts when you shop at certain places. And lastly, you can invest in stocks and Bitcoin. So let's see how Mercado Pago stacks up to the Cash App. So boom, it's the first bullet point right there. Use a cell phone as your new wallet. And that's the whole idea behind Cash App. Pay with your cell phone and take advantage of discounts at your favorite stores. Well, hmm, that sounds a lot like the cash card and its boosts, if I'm not mistaken. Solve your daily payments with the app and save time for yourself. So you can pay for services or transfer money, much like the payment service for Cash App. Next, share expenses with friends and forget about cash. Again, peer-to-peer -peer payments, you can split bills with each other and they actually do the math for you. I think that's pretty cool. You can access a credit line, which is something not mentioned on the Cash App page, but I believe that is something that Cash App is working on, so stay tuned for that. But for now, let's move on to the point of sales. And we'll actually come back to this credit part in a second with Mercado Credit. All right, so now we have Square's point of sale system, and I believe you're, most of you are familiar with this one. It looks like this. And Mercado Pago doesn't have this exact same technology, but it has the same idea. So again, these websites are looking eerily similar. From the looks of it, Mercado Libre's may be a bit behind on technology. They're still using these cumbersome kind of clunky devices. But remember, Latin America is still adopting the technologies we use here in America. And not to fret, they still have QR codes. And you can actually print these QR codes and start charging people with the QR code on the same day, which I think is pretty neat. They can also help you integrate your shop and business into social media like WhatsApp, and that's awesome too. This just talks a little bit more about integration and how you can open your Mercado Pago bank account and link it to your business for all sorts of tools, tools such as using credit to reach your goals. So now we're gonna compare Square Capital, which gives smaller loans to small businesses with Mercado Libre's Mercado Credit. Again, first we're gonna cover what Square looks like. So get a customized offer based on your card sales through Square and then choose your loan size. Repay it automatically with a percentage of your daily card sales through Square. And here's the other thing, money in your account as soon as tomorrow, pay it back automatically, no long forms to fill out. So let's compare it to Mercado Credit. Just like before, instant similarities. Get a customized offer, always tailored to you. Transparent from day one, direct to your account for you to invest. So here are some stats about Mercado Credit. Over 20,000 people have accepted their proposals and probably used their service. Seven out of 10 of these people take a loan again after paying it back the first time, meaning they either found it enjoyable enough or effective enough to do it again, or, well actually, yeah, that's probably the main reason. This is how it works. You receive a proposal according to your sales, again, based on your sales through Square, well, this is based on your sales through Mercado Pago. You have the money available instantly in Mercado Pago, just like Square, as soon as tomorrow, and you pay it with the money from your sales, which again, Square does, pay it back automatically with a percentage of your daily card sales through Square. See the similarities here? So here's the part I actually really like about Mercado's credit offering. Here are the requirements if you want a loan from Mercado Libre or Mercado Pago. You will receive a proposal when you meet these requirements for three months. You need to sell more than $1,000 per month and you need to have a green reputation and maintain a good credit history, of course. The reason why I like this is because it forces you to be in Mercado Libre's ecosystem for at least three months and this gives you a goal to work towards and stay motivated and of course do it well and do it safely and responsibly. This is like YouTube, okay? YouTube requires you to have 4,000 watch hours and 1,000 subscribers before you get monetized. So that's what keeps a lot of creators going in the early days. Well, just like YouTube, Mercado Libre is keeping a lot of early shop owners going and motivated to meet these goals so that they can leverage their business and grow it exponentially using credit. So not only does this help new shop owners, but it also helps Mercado Libre gain loyal shop owners in their ecosystem. So that's their business. That's how they compare to Amazon and Square. But now let's talk about why I like Mercado Libre better than Shopify as an investment. This is part three, Mercado Libre versus Shopify and C Limited as a side note. Let's start off by comparing some metrics between Mercado Libre and Shopify. 
Shopify. At the time of recording, Shopify's market cap is now around $120 billion, and Mercado Libre's is near $57 billion. Either way, Shopify is double Mercado Libre's, and I think that is the first sign that shows Shopify may be overvalued, and you'll see more signs coming up. Both stocks are hovering at around $1,000 per share, and that is because Mercado Libre has less than half the number of outstanding shares as Shopify, but Shopify's market cap, as we said, is double Mercado Libre's. You should also keep this in mind for part four of the video, talking about a potential stock split. Next, Mercado Libre absolutely rocks Shopify in annual sales with nearly 2.3 billion in sales versus Shopify's 1.5 billion. However, Shopify does come in with a smaller annual net loss, as you can see in the next line. But here's the real kicker that shows just how overvalued Shopify may be compared to Mercado Libre. We're gonna put up a chart of something called the price to sales ratio, and this ratio tells us how much the market values every dollar of the company's sales. Generally speaking, the lower the better in terms of value. This is sort of like using the PE ratio to compare two companies. However, Shopify and Mercado Libre don't have very consistent earnings yet, so we use the PS ratio. So here it is. This is the one year chart that shows Shopify's PS ratio in purple and Mercado Libre's in orange. As you can see, Shopify is significantly outpacing Mercado Libre, which suggests that Shopify is very overvalued to Mercado Libre, or Mercado Libre is undervalued compared to Shopify. If I had a dime for every time I said Mercado Libre in this video, I wouldn't even need to turn on ads. Of course, the PS ratio is just one thing you should take into account when determining the valuation of a company, but this difference was pretty staggering to me. And of course, if we're talking about e-commerce, we cannot forget to mention C Limited, ticker symbol SE. I actually like this one a lot as well. I like how they have the gaming aspect with G Garena, Garena, Garena? In addition to, of course, Shopee and also their fintech platform, C Money. I just haven't done enough research into them yet to present my thesis to all of you via video and YouTube, but I think they have a lot of the same growth opportunities as Mercado Libre. They also have virtually the same market cap. So when deciding between C Limited and Melly, it really just comes down to, do you want to invest in Latin America or Southeast Asia? And I'm still deciding. Well, technically I decided on Mercado Libre because I bought them at $1,100 recently. Top tier patrons, of course, were notified. However, I'm deciding whether I want to go more into Mercado Libre or diversify with both Melly and C Limited. This is an article that I thought was really interesting in regards to this topic, I'll link it in the description below, right next to the link to two free stocks from Webull, valued it up to $1,400, and of course, the link to join the Patreon. But yeah, I do like C Limited from what I've seen so far, and if you got in early, congrats on the gains. Now, finally, part four, stock split city. Are we going to see a stock split? Recently, we saw Apple announce their stock split and its stock price blew through the roof. Then we saw Tesla announce their stock split and its price continued to bounce back aggressively. So by now, I assume or at least hope you guys are all familiar with how a stock split works and what it means. Well, I think Mercado Libre should split their stock as well. Remember this picture right here? See how Shopify on the left has double the market cap of Mercado Libre, but it also has double the number of shares outstanding? Well, that means Mercado Libre stock is going to be hovering around $1,000 to $1,100 per share, just like Shopify stock, even though Mercado Libre is valued at half of Shopify's market cap. A price tag of $1,000 per share is extremely intimidating to everyday investors and retail investors like you and me. And Mercado Libre has so much growth ahead of it, it's only half the value of Shopify. But if it keeps the number of shares where it is, then it's gonna be hard for us to get in. And I'm aware of fractional shares, but I feel like it's not the same if you own 0.2 shares of a company versus a whole share. Look at C Limited, for example. They're just $126 per share, but their market cap is nearly the exact same as Mercado Libre's. And for this reason, I can almost guarantee that most retail investors, if deciding between C Limited and Mercado Libre, will pick C Limited, because despite the fact that both companies are valued at almost the same price, the share price for C Limited is much more manageable. So to the exec team at Mercado Libre, if you are somehow by miracle watching this video, give us a split, please. If you found any value in this video, and I hope you did, please make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and there's usually a quote of the day here that I would have you read, but that is actually hinting at an announcement that I will soon be making in future videos, so stay tuned. Make sure to follow me on Instagram for daily posts about my portfolio, stocks I'm watching, and all that good stuff. And lastly, if you're watching at this point in the video, you are the real MVPs. Don't forget your peace and thank yous.